Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and I had a question about how to set an eyelet with the crocodile. So I thought I would show you the easiest way to set an eyelet with the crocodile. And um, I spent lots of time trying to figure this out and there's lots of other videos out there on how to do this. But uh, what I ba basically did was I sat down with a bunch of eyelets that um, I bought, all mixed different sizes and everything. And I found the most foolproof way to get things to work right was as follows. Uh, if you just want a simple, basic way to operate the crocodile. I am not sponsored by crocodile. We are memory keepers, anything like that. This just happens to be a tool that I found helpful in journal making. And I just wanted to show you guys how to use it because I know you have some questions about it. Okay, so, um, okay, did, uh, let's, let's, we do hole punch first and then we set the eyelet. Okay, so a little demonstration on what this little gizmo uh, is all about, and it's less complicated than it looks. So let's just back up a little bit. You have the blue um, button, which has three positions. You have the squasher arm, and then you have all the action down here. This is where everything, all the magic happens, okay? And uh, so basically, just to do the eyelet, uh, we are going to punch a hole, and the hole, we have two choices. Let me zoom in here, you can see better. Here. Can we see better? Okay. Focusing? Yeah, okay. All right. The first, all the way to the left, is the eyelet squasher. And you can actually see a picture of an eyelet in there standing up. Okay, so that is going to operate the eyelet squasher. Okay, that's the eyelet squasher. All right. The other two holes, or the other two positions, position two, oh. and, whoop. Whoop. Sorry. Come on. Come on. Focus. There we go. One eighth and three sixteenths. Okay. So that's what those are our choices. One eighth and three sixteenths. You can remember that one eighth is the small hole punch. Three sixteenths, the farthest one to the right, is the big hole punch. Okay, let me just show you down here. Small hole punch big hole punch. Okay, great. Um, you can also remember an easy way is uh, one, one eighth, one is smaller than three, three sixteenths. So one eighth is your smaller one, three sixteenths is your bigger one. I found in journal making, um, this is just a personal choice, that the three sixteenth eyelet is really most versatile. It can do the most with it. So I decided to learn the three sixteenth one. That was all I was going to bite off and chew. Okay, so let's Go to the 3 16th size all the way to the right. Just make sure you push it all the way right. You can test it, making sure the big chomper comes down. And then you're going to uh, take a paper. Okay. We're going to punch some holes. So let's just punch our holes. And this part's pretty easy. You just, um, let me back up a little bit so you can see the whole, the whole enchilada going on here. Okay. All right. So here I'm grabbing it. And the hole punching is very easy. One punch. I'll just do three punches. Okay, so I got three punches. No problem, right? Good so far. All right, now let's uh, zoom in a little bit. And now we're going to set a 3 16th inch eyelet. Um, now what I would recommend is that with your eyelets, you look for the eyelets that have the split top. See how it has a, like it's actually a split bottom. See the split bottom on that eyelet? That is going to, when you squash the eyelet, it's going to make the back of the eyelet flower and become an anchor on the other side of the paper as so, okay? Now, uh, so this is what you want. That's a good setting. Here's another one, pretty good setting, okay? These are by different manufacturers. I went on, um, you can buy We Are Memory Keeper eyelets to match this machine and they should work uh, very well, although they are a little bit more expensive. You can go on, uh, eBay and find knockoffs of these and um, or just other people that make eyelets that have the split top and uh, get a 3 16th. Okay, don't mess around with millimeters. Don't mess around with uh, anything else. If you want the easiest way to do it, just stick with 3 16th inch eyelets that have the little split top. Okay, I don't know what the official split top is called, but you can see it in the pictures of the eyelets. So make sure you get those. All right, so now let's set an eyelet. Let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna squash now, right? So we have to move our blue button all the way to the front and that's gonna operate the eyelet squasher, okay? Now, 
There, this is the part that boggled me forever. And I finally found one setting that pretty much is foolproof and I just leave it there and I don't monkey with it. And I, I don't worry about the other ones because it's like a Rubik's cube down here. These things, this comes down, this spins around to high heaven. Okay. You have two choices, a little stick and a big stick sticking out of this. You want the big stick on the bottom. See the fat, fatter stick. Yeah. You want the fat stick, fat silver stick. So once you found the fat silver stick and you've put it in the position, so it's pointing down, shove it back up there to lock it in place. Okay. And, um, that is what you want. Okay. So that's good. Now the bottom gives you four choices. You have a silver flying saucer dish, which is the actual one that we do want. Okay. And then you have a copper one, a gold one, and a pewter colored one, but keep going until you get to the silver flying saucer disc. All right. And then put it down and lock it in place. Okay. So now you are good to go and you are ready to squash your eyelet and we're coming in here. Okay. So you can really see. Okay. Yep. 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 All right. So here is our paper and now we are going to place our eyelet in the, the hole, the 3 16th inch hole, and we're going to put it in. Okay. This is the top of our eyelet. The top of the eyelet should go touch the top big fat silver stick. Okay. Don't put it in like this. No, nope, don't do that. Put it in like this. So as if you're looking down on the eyelet, like as if you saw this as a pair of shoelaces, um, where that, that little thing is. All right. So you, you, you put in there and you get that little stick to go through the eyelet hole. Okay. And then just hold it for a second. I, I like to use two hands for this because I think it just, it pushes it more evenly. Let me back out so you can see all that. All right, here we go. Okay. So I'm squashing. It doesn't take that much pressure. Okay. And I'm squashing. All right. And then I'm done and I'm releasing. And now what do we got? What do we got? We have this. That's looking good. Yeah. And let's flip it over. And we have a nice flare. We have the flower flare and that's what we want. There is a little bit of raised nest there, but it's, it's, there is, it's, there is metal that has to go somewhere. So there is going to be some thickness to the eyelet. Okay. And, um, if you give it a good squeeze, it's going to go ahead and flatten itself and you'll have an eyelet placed. Now, um, just for a quick, so you know, here's a, a success. Here's a success. These two are exactly the same, but let me show you how my results differed. I'm going to turn it on its edge and you'll see. Okay. Do you see how this one got flattened a lot more than this one? Okay. This one, I, um, used one hand to squeeze and I, I don't, don't think I put as much pressure. So it didn't finish the flaring of the flower. Okay. This one, I used more pressure and the flower flared and it went all the way down. So what is this one? This one could be also used for something that is thicker, uh, because you can, you'll have a longer shaft there. And then that will give you more, let's say you're going through, um, a book cover or multiple pages or something like that. That's thicker or canvas or something like that material where you need a little bit more thickness than just uh, wafer thin. Um, that might come in handy there, but for 99% of uh, journal needs and things like that, where you're just punching through paper, um, that the, the, the full squash will serve you best. And what I always recommend is do a few test ones first. You're always going to have to like put a few of these on the chopping block and just know that they're experiments. And, um, oh, what you, you want to avoid are the, this is what I found the ones that do not have the splits. See that no splits. Uh, from my understanding, these are grommets and they are not, they're going to, uh, sometimes they will split when you squash them really hard and sometimes they won't, but if they split, they're going to give you a big crack on one side and, uh, it's not going to, I'll show you. I'm going to just show you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to punch a hole. Oh, I got to put my thing back. Okay. Punching. Whoop, oh, that wasn't a very good hole. Give me get there. Okay. Here's a hole and I'll put this through and I'll show you what happens when I squash with this one. All right. I'm going to use the same amount of pressure. Can you see? Yeah. Let me bring you down here. Okay. And I'm going to go through the middle. No, I got to reset my button. Okay. All the way to the front to my eyelet squasher. Use two hands. Okay. Did you hear the snap? That means the metal broke. Okay. Let me show you what the metal broke breaking looks like. Looks every okay on this side, right? Not bad. There's kind of a little kind of cockeyed nest to the oh, round shape. Let me show you the back. There you go. That's what happens because they don't have the pre splits. Okay. So the metal has to give somewhere. 
okay? Yep, still flat, still works, still function, but you do have a bit of a sharper edge. Now these truly may be grommets and may be used for thicker things and maybe you just want a little curl of the metal and maybe one of these other little buttons would work better in that case and you can have hours of fun trying to figure out which those two are. And like I said, there are other videos. But if you want the simplest way to get your eyelets on and have some eyelet fun and get moving on that is get your 3 16th eyelets with the split on top, whether you get them from We Are Memory Keepers or just a knockoff on another, you know, Etsy or eBay or wherever these are sold. And uh, just get in there with the, the big stick silver piece on top and the flying saucer disc silver piece on the bottom and you should be all set to go. So uh, that was just this little quickie if anybody needed that rundown on eyelet um, function of the Crocodile 2 Big Bite, and I hope that helps. And uh, feel free to uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions on it, and I want you to feel comfortable with the tool, and I suggest you getting a bunch of eyelets so that you can play with them, but make sure that they're at least the 316th, okay? Take care, everybody, and you guys have some fun out there, and happy eyelet punching and squashing. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>